Hi everyone. In this tutorial we'll have a look at PowerDirector 12's PIP Designer. So let's start with a quick overview of PIP Designer. As we can see we have three sections. The effects properties which include the motion and mask properties. The preview screen and the keyframe timelines. In this example we'll have our main video or image in track number one. We can now add another bit of media into track number two and do some PIP customizing by clicking on the modify button. Now that we are in PIP designer let's resize and add a motion path so that the PIP moves across and on top of our main video in track number one. First we'll click on the motion button and we can now see a series of predefined motion paths. But let's create our own custom path by clicking on the X button. We can now see that a motion keyframe is automatically added to the first and last frame of our media. But since we also want to customize the scale or size, we'll also click on the scale icon to add a separate set of scale keyframes. Now we can readjust the scale and then by holding our cursor on the blue dot change the position of our media. Then move to the last keyframe and again set your desired scale and position. To hold or pause your PIP's ending position move the scrubber and add keyframes. Then right click on each and choose duplicate next keyframe. You can also repeat this procedure with the beginning keyframe, but this time choose duplicate previous keyframe. To add a third position, move the timeline scrubber, add keyframes, and then rescale and reposition. Now move the scrubber ahead, add keyframes, and again right click and choose duplicate previous keyframe. We can now also add a border and shadow to our PIP by clicking on the Properties button. Choose the Border option and then click on Apply Border. We can add a two-color border by choosing Two-Color Gradient and then choosing our colors. Now click on Shadow and then Apply Shadow. Choose the Shadow Position, Shadow Distance and maybe even add a little Shadow Blur. Here's another example where we'll add motion to a static graphic. We put a sky background in track number one, a grass field in track number three, and a ball in track number two. With track number two highlighted, click on Modify to open PIP Designer. Then click on Motion, then Custom Path. And now we'll also add our scale keyframes. We can now resize and position the ball at the first keyframe. Then scrub ahead to the last keyframe and right click on the scale keyframe and choose Duplicate Previous Keyframe. And now we can reposition the ball. Next we'll add our rotation keyframes. I'm going to set my rotation setting to 530. Then click on Save. The chroma key tool can also be found in PIP Designer. In this example, we have a video clip in track number one. We'll now drag a video logo on a green screen background to track number two. Click on Modify to open PIP Designer, and then we can scale and reposition the logo clip. Now click on Enable Chroma Key, and then on the eyedropper tool. Using the eyedropper tool, choose the color that you want to remove. Then use the available settings adjustments to refine the chroma key properties. Once you're happy with the results, click on Save. Another option in PIP Designer is the mask option. With an image or video clip in track number one, we'll drag another image or clip to track number two. Now open PIP Designer. 
Then click on the mask button and scroll down and choose a mask. You can then resize and position your mask and click on save. Back on the main screen you can now make further and overall scale and position adjustments. A new option in PowerDirector 12's mask room is the ability to now easily import and create a custom mask. Simply import any image that has a transparent background and PowerDirector 12 will automatically transform it into a custom mask. For a full description of all the other options available in PIP Designer, please see the PowerDirector help files. Thanks for watching.